The other thing to think about too is you need to think of when people ask you about process models, you need to think in terms of what type of process model. Steady state models are used by things like ISIS process, other most uh, process design modeling packages where you use them for plan and process design. They're great for plan and process design, but a steady state model cannot be used for operator training because it doesn't allow the transitions between process states and time delays or lives to be compensated. It doesn't handle those very well. You really need a dynamic model for software acceptance testing and operator training. And the characteristics of a dynamic model is it's built from the ground up with a mathematical relationship so it handles time delays, lag, and transport effects and dead times in the process. If somebody comes to you and says, I got a steady state model and all I got to do is run it through the super utility and it's going to come out dynamic, run away from them. They, they, they either don't know what they're, they're talking about or they're, they're leading you down the wrong path. There is no way. The mathematical relationship is just much different between steady state and the dynamic model. Um, we really have to think in terms of the reason why they're so different is we are really trying to uh, just, we don't have to design the process for software acceptance testing operator training. We just have to model the process. So we're always doing our modeling that way. Now because of that though, in some ways our simulations are much simpler and much more straightforward. Um, when you look at the models as well, when people tell you whether it's low, higher, uh, medium, or high fidelity, um, it's again can be very confusing, but really it shouldn't be. Low fidelity modeling is just going to give you simple IO signals, device time, X, and value, and initialization. Medium fidelity is generally what most people are going to need for operator training and testing. It's going to give you mass balance, heat balance models, and the, the difference between that and high fidelity models is the amount of tuning, the amount of additional data correlations you do, and also the way the, uh, the streams within the process are modeled. And generally, um, medium fidelity models, you take all the streams as just a single component that does not change phase or state. And high fidelity models, you have to add in individual thermodynamic properties. Um, it's very important to fit the level of complexity of your model based upon the task. If you're testing, in general, you're, as you get more and more advanced in the, um, the parts of the control system, all the way up to advanced control and our um, MES <coughs> integration, you're going to need more and more complexity in your simulation. Though I must kind of cash that in that uh, most of the time for testing your control system, even advanced control strategies of the infidelity model, good mass balance, heat balance is all you need. If you start to invest more than that, you may not be getting the results you need out of it. The exception of that is very uh, complex, continuous integrated processes. And a lot of refiners, petrochemical plants, because of the nature of the process, you're just going to need a much higher fidelity model. And you may need a, a, you know, a very complex model because otherwise the process is so complex, it, it, the reactions and everything are just not going to, the relationships are not going to be modeled correctly. But you always want to look at what you're trying to do, the task, and the process, and you want to selectively apply your models based upon, again, the task and the process. And you can mix that together so that if you have, you don't have to have everything in a rigorous high fidelity model. The distillation column can be high fidelity. The tank farm can be low or maybe medium fidelity. <coughs> and remember, whenever you're looking at building your models and designing your system, the more complex you go with your models, it's going to increase your cost of model development and also the maintenance. But again, I'm not saying the high fidelity models aren't necessary. They are, especially when you get into continuous and highly integrated processes. So how do you get the most return on investment? I would say, first of all, once again, you want to plan the simulation for software acceptance testing and operator training to the automation project lifecycle up front. You want to think about your, your goals, what you're trying to do with the training and testing. Make sure you have those clearly put away. You don't just go out and just say, just give me a, a simulator. You need to make sure that you, have to, you know exactly what you're trying to do with the simulation system, whether you're going to be testing or going to be training. You follow the guidelines we have at the beginning of the presentation. 
Begin testing and training early. With Delta V simulated mimic and uh, Delta V, you have the ability really as soon as you have any configuration at all. If you just have a database of graphics, you can begin testing. And catch things early. And get your operators to buy into it early as well. Get them uh, get the feedback on your face plates, on your how you're doing things from a from a, even from a, a control module and equipment module standpoint. The more stuff you catch early on, the more you get their buy-in early on, the better your project's going to be throughout. Don't save it all for the end. Uh, I don't think you can do too much testing. You probably can't do much too much training either. So uh, uh, test, 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 and train, train, train on anything you. Uh, can't test or train on a live system. Any ideas you come up with, use your simulator. You're going to invest uh, some money in the simulator. They're not free. If they were, we wouldn't be in business. So um, uh, when you invest that money, get the most you can out of it. Make it an integral part of your plan. Um, use the simulator for documentation and test records. If you're a validated facility, it's more the use of using your simulate, simulator for doing your um, OQ test record uh, preparation. It's been proven by many folks in the life science industry and it saves an incredible amount of money. Um, put the plans in place whether you need to work with your local Emerson rep or you need to put the people in place yourself to keep the simulation system current with the, off, with the online process automation system. The more you keep it up to date, uh, the greater assets it's going to be for you. Um, I added this last one after uh, Jason's uh, talk earlier this week. Uh, it's based upon the um, feedback that from some of the folks in the room that we need to keep in mind that simulators for software acceptance testing for, and operator training are plant operations assets. The people that will get the benefit from this are the operations staff and the, oper uh, the operations department. If you're a process control guy, you can help them get there. But they need to be the owners. They're going to get the most benefit from it, and they need to have the buy-in for it. They need to see the benefit and uh, the direction to that. So remember that these are plan operations assets, and they will give you great uh, benefit. Another benefit that we've seen, which we used to sell for the maintenance, oh. is the practicing of upgrades. Yes. Yeah. That, oh, that's a great tip. Yeah. It's invaluable. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah, and just testing. In, in many cases in the validated industries, um, you cannot do an upgrade without doing some degree of testing for your test documentation plan, formalized testing. Mm -hmm. And boy, I'd just much rather do that in an offline system than online. Yeah, it's what you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Keeps you in much better standing with your operations staff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. The benefits are proven, um, and we've seen... Uh, Generally, we see that the uh, simulator um, pays for itself only for the start of the project. I can't tell you how many times over the last five years of, uh, uh, of working uh, within the mining technologies and um, in this business that I've heard people say that my simulator investment has the greatest return on investment on anything I've put in, in the last couple of years. I'm going to hear that. So the benefits are there. We see them time and time again. Um, you're going to get great benefits. Uh, call us and get the guidelines we've gone through here. Call us if, we have, if you have any questions about it. We'll try to steer you in the right direction. But uh, if you're a Delta V user, you have some great tools to uh, test and train your operators.